so I, I too bad. We have we have like real speakers. Um, so yeah, um, Hannah, take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Hannah, and I'm going to share about the personal challenge I took up. So earlier this year, I heard about this concept called 100 day projects, which is basically people who keep coding or keep creating things to express their unique thinkings. Then I asked myself, what could I possibly do for 100 days without giving up or losing interest? And the answer was obvious. I decided to work on a field where there's an overflow of resources which is data. So I will grab data from Kaggle, from data world, from data.gov.sg, or scrap my old data from Twitter or whatsoever. And all of those data actually became the seed and soil <coughs> for my coding projects. <coughs> so when I started, I was more concerned about learning new things and um, challenge myself, also have some fun rather than the readership. Uh, so I started writing on Medium blog and this is the first one of the, my earliest project which I basically grab a very simple data set containing the consumption level of beer, wine and liquor by country. And I just did a very simple hierarchical clustering to see which countries are more similar in terms of their drinking preference. <coughs> then our publication picked it up and people started reading it. Afterwards, I um, branched out to some many other topics. So one of the recent projects I did is I look at the migrants who are went missing. So sometimes those illegal migrants will take very dangerous routes. Many of them will never reach the other end. So this got me interested in understanding the human face behind the data. Another project I did is I um, using a set of different uh, driving factor, looking at the different happiness level of the countries to see is it economy or peace or corruption that contributed more to uh, a country's happiness. Uh, another thing I did is looking at which countries are most expensive or least expensive instead of um, in terms of getting a gadget. Um, also another project I did is I look at Simpsons and I realized the characters in Simpsons all have a lot of alter egos, like they could assume a lot of uh, role plays and in areas maybe they're not just Bart Simpson, they are middle-aged Bart Simpson, or they are medieval, <laughs> um, gypsy, or uh, some Egyptian Bart Simpson. <laughs> then without knowing, I branched out to more and more topics and I started to realize I've covered things from public transport to public health, from astrophysics to entertainment, from food and drinks to uh, social issues. So what this is really about is I realized by continuing working on something that you find interesting, it kind of uh, gives you a structure of disciplines that if you just learn something, you don't know whether you have actually mastered it until you have uh, starting to practicing practicing it. It also creates uh, this amazing momentum. It makes a creativity into your muscle memory and makes you keep creating new stuff. So what's next? In my previous project, I used a lot of R and some of the building softwares like Tableau and Kato DB, which is very specialized in making geospatial visualization. Uh, what's next is I'm going to do more JavaScript or um, interactive, visual interactive storytelling, and I hope that will be fun. So this is my mm, blog handle in case you are interested. And if there's any, if there's just one takeaway, I think um, for whatever things you are interested in, we can always find our medium, create our own canvas, and find our own stage. So thank you very much. Yeah, she had time for the extra minute. So yeah. if you want to show anything in this one minute, you can. <laughs> it's, it's all there. Okay, <laughs> six, six minutes of questions. Okay. Yeah, we've got six minutes of questions. That's fine, too. Um, yeah. Um, Let me see the slide with all the visualizations. <laughs> yeah, can you show us some of your favorite visualizations? I'm not sure how to go back. So I think I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the SF 
backgrounds. It's like a super easy one, but it shows um, the heavy traffic by timing. So basically I did a small multiple different times of the day, and then basically I picked six hours that, are, that have the heaviest traffic, which means they're not midnight, they're not midday. And then by using their geographical coordinate, I can um, plot an arc to connect their origin and destinations. And it's simple and effective and fast, which I really like. Do you think you have, you have a, you can show us a medium post of the static image so we can appreciate <laughs> this is going quite fast now. I'm it's not connected to Wi Fi, so I will oh, leave it to you to. Really to yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Um, people can check. <laughs> I have a question. I say, uh, do you like to graph more or do you like the story behind the graph? I think it's important to understand the story behind. So I feel that one of the challenges in this project is one need to take a lot of time to clean and make sense of the data before you can actually do a graph. And one issue with open data is actually the quality is not always good. So sometimes after you spend the time, you realize this data set is not going to be useful. And, and even if it's useful, um, there's a lot of sense making to, uh, to do, like exactly what does this mean? Um, it, and maybe you can combine this data set with other data set, uh, data set of a totally different topic. And this from, and when you combine data set from many different perspectives, you start to just see a complete picture that, um, that like monolithic data would not show you. Mm -hmm. well, I have the laptop connected to internet. Oh, okay. Uh, we can take more questions as we set this up. Yeah. So I have a question about like the logistics of yep. the whole hundred days, hundred project yep. thing. Two questions actually. One uh, they are related. One is, did you build up a reserve before you started, or did you really just jump in day one and then every, each one was made really from scratch? Um, when you say, did I build up a reserve, do you mean I search for 100 topics first before I... Yes, or like 20. I think that would be a great idea. I kind of just went spontaneously and based on what data I find that day or what kind of things, what kind of charges people have in that period of time, and I just dive right in. And then my, my, my other question is, did you have any days where you were like, ah, I'm not really satisfied with this one, but you know, let's just get over this, maybe tomorrow I have a better idea, just let's get this out of the door? Yeah, definitely. I feel, I feel one element of creativity is if you keep going for perfection, maybe you'll never reach a stage where you can show it to people. So I feel it may be better just to quick get, quickly get things out, of, out there and then just move on. Maybe days later you have a better idea and then you could redo that project. So some of the project I did are part one and I feel that's it. And a few days later I decided like, hey, I could actually do it in a different way. So one of that is a project I did on what the United Nations is talking about in terms of refugee. So in the first one I did was really simple. It's um, basically using our package called Spacey to um, kind of uh, spit out the keywords and figure out what are the key entities they are talking about, maybe or even you can identify which words refer to countries and then you can plot these countries on timeline to see maybe during this period a lot of chatter on Syria, maybe in this period a lot of chatter on Africa. So that was the part one I did. And recently, I, yesterday, I started to do part two. <laughs> Um, which is you can parse the dependency between verbs and nouns, and then you realize people are, what what kind of uh, stuff people are actually talking about. Um, for example, people could be talking about expressed gratitude, or give asylum, or facilitate repatriation. So this uh, kind of goes one step further into making sense making sense of what. Um, intergovernmental agency are talking about in terms of refugees and I also are putting another data set which is um, all the news coverage from Google's GDL project to figure out what news media are talking about in terms of this topic. Mm -hmm. Continuing on the logistics of yep. 100 days, 
Uh, did you do that full time during one hour a day? So it's a side project, one hour a day? Or oh, it's a side project. Uh, it's a side project after work. And uh, so I feel because it it's different from other projects where people do our photography or illustration every day. And um, I feel this could be potentially data visualization, could potentially be more time consuming because first of all, you need to clean, clean the data. And that itself takes a huge chunk of time. So I don't think one needs to do it continuously for 100 days to like stress you out because the main point is to learn something and have fun. So. Basically, I think anyone if interested in 100 days project, just do it at their own pace will be good enough. Yes? So did you have any interruption in the middle? And what happened if you did? Uh, so during traveling, I don't do it. Or sometimes even during days where there's a lot of work, I don't do it. So one thing I realized is the momentum is quite important. So there was a time I was traveled for more than two weeks, and then when I came back, I realized I kind of lose the momentum for a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, I think we are at time. Um, but thank you all for your questions. And thank you.